Hello everybody, I'm here with a video related to particle kinetics and uh, the objective is to use impulse and momentum principle to solve this problem. As you can see here in the, in the picture, we have uh, a log whose mass is given to be 500 kilograms. Uh, rest on the ground for uh, which the coefficient of static friction is given to be 0.5 so mu s is 0.5 and also we are given the coefficient of kinetic friction to be 0.4 uh, as you could see this power winch here this motor is exerting a force on the cable that is connected to the winch power winch and this force as shown in the picture is changing as a function of time. So initially it's a parabolic function and then it becomes a constant of 1800 newtons. So for three seconds it's changing parabolically starting from zero and then it becomes constant. Okay, um, we want to find the speed of the log of this 500 kilogram log when t is equal to five seconds. So find the speed V when time is five seconds. And we were told that initially uh, the, the, uh, the, the crate or the uh, rather the log is at rest. And obviously you could see that the initial force is equal to zero. Okay. So for these problems, what you have to be careful is uh, depending on how the motor responds, uh, the motion can, would not start right away. So you could see that actually the force is zero initially. So clearly that the motion is not going to happen. So you have to go and find uh, the time when the motion starts. And the way you do that is by drawing a free body diagram. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram. So you could see you got the uh, the weight of this guy, which is 500 times 9.81, which is, I believe is 4,905 Newtons. Then you got a normal force. Then you got a friction force. And this would be the static friction initially that you have to overcome that we can calculate in a minute. And uh, by the way, you could also see that, so this is the, uh, if you call this F, this is also F. You could see that this F is equal to twice T here, right? In this free body diagram, F equal to T. So the tension is doubled in a way, right? Or actually the force is doubled, force acting on the log. It's twice the force that you're getting from the, uh, the power winch from the motor, right? And basically you have this force has to overcome this static friction, this guy, right? So if you go ahead and find the static friction, the static friction is mu s times n. So that's 0 0.5 times uh, 4,905, which is 2,452.5 newtons. So if you look at the free body diagram here, this F that I've shown you here, right? Uh, this F must be equal to friction. So at least you need that much tension. And remember that F is 2T. So basically if you set 2T equal to the friction force, which is 2,452.5, and remember T is what? T initially is what? 200 T squared, right? And this becomes 400 T squared, equal 2,452 and a half. And then you can solve for time. So the time comes out to be 2.467 seconds. So the motion actually starts at this time. Which means now, a typical mistake is that you try to solve the problem actually, or calculate the impulse of all the forces from time equals zero and that's not right because you have to start calculating your impulses from the time when the motion starts so now we are ready to actually solve the problem based on the impulse and momentum so we needed to calculate the time when the motion starts at first okay just the catch of the problem is that once the motion starts 
the static friction is no longer valid. You have to go ahead and calculate kinetic friction, which is it's going to be smaller. It's going to be based on mu k. So if you go ahead, uh, go ahead and put 0.4 times 4,905 mu k times n friction, I believe, becomes 1,962 newtons. This is the kinetic friction now, the one that we're going to use for an, our analysis. So if you start with your impulse momentum equation, mv2 minus mv1 equal impulse, right? I mean, you can use this free body diagram. Obviously, the motion happens in the x direction, so if you call that your positive direction, initial velocity is zero up to 2.467, right? And then the motion starts. Mass equal 500 kilograms. This would be velocity V2 would be velocity that we are, we are looking for. Velocity at T equal 5 seconds. Equal impulse. So now what impulses do we have? We have the impulse of this force, which is actually 2T, right? What is T? T is a variable. We have to integrate it, right? So we integrate 2 times t, which is 200 t squared, but not from 0, from 2.467 to what time? To 5 seconds, when we want to calculate the velocity. So that takes care of that, except that we are going to 5 seconds, right? I'm sorry, to 3 seconds, sorry, to 3 seconds, because this is only valid for that 3 seconds. Here we go. I was making a mistake. Now, we add the additional area to it. That area, remember, impulse is also area, which you can actually integrate that constant. But anyways, it's also 2t. Be careful, guys. That 2 is from here. That's this force. So 2 times what? The area of that guy is an 1,800 times 5 minus 3, or 2 seconds. What else do we have? We still have what? friction force, the impulse of this friction. Remember, that's the kinetic friction, guys, not the static friction that I used here, okay? So be careful. 1,962, the, the impulse of a constant force is what? Force, remember, the impulse of a constant force is what? Force, like a friction force, kinetic friction force times delta T. What is delta T? Delta T, again, is final time 5, initial time is 2.467. All right, guys, you could calculate, integrate this, and evaluate it. So I'm not going to go through the detail of the math part. So let me just give you the final velocity. So this is V2, or your velocity at t equal 5 seconds, right, at this time. So this should come out to be 7.65 seconds. So this log, based on this profile of this uh, the force or the tension given by the, the winch will have a velocity at t equal 5 seconds equal to 7.65 seconds. Okay, guys, so if I were you, I would actually go through the calculation, do the integration here, calculate it or evaluate it within the time limit, and then subtract this, add that, and see if you get the, the same answer. Okay, guys, uh, so remember the catch to this problem was the motion doesn't happen um, right away. You have to use the static friction to calculate at what time the motion starts. And then once the motion starts, you have to use the kinetic friction. Okay. As always, thanks for watching and listening. And I hope you subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a good day.